Oh, hi there, YouTube. I'm back again today for another game review, another special expansion review. And today I'm very excited to check out the Hero Realms boss deck, The Dragon. This is from White Wizard Games. This is for two to six players, and this is in a small pack expansion to Hero Realms that is going to turn Hero Realms into a one versus all game where one person will be playing as a ferocious, terrifying dragon with their own special cards and their own special horde of really awesome special cards and everyone else is going to be playing as a cleric or a scout or a wizard or something trying to defeat that dragon so this is going to add additional players allowing the game to go up to six players and turn it into a one versus all game which sounds awesome but is it awesome let's open it up and i'll tell you what i think Alrighty then, we're going to take a look at what you're going to get inside of Hero Realms, the boss deck, the dragon. So, first and foremost, you're going to have this handy dandy little rule sheet. It's two pages, or one pages, double sided, and it's pretty well done. It should have you up and running in no time at all. You probably need it once or twice, and then never really need it again because it is a relatively simple addition to the game. Now, one thing I want to mention before we get started is that in order to play this, you will need those character packs to play against the dragon. I'm presuming that you could play against it without the character packs, but you would just absolutely get crazy rush because the dragon let me tell you this dragon is really stinking powerful as a boss dragon should be though but let's take a look at what you're going to get and then we'll get into how a little bit how it works so first you're going to get your little health tracker right here and i will say at the higher player counts you're going to have to use a pen and paper because this uh expansion now allows you to go up to six players so five regular players on the starting party and then the dragon so that's really kind of cool uh but you're going to need to track it with pen and paper because you'll start with i think 250 health so a lot of stink health. Uh, next you're going to get this handy dandy little player aid card here which will tell you the starting deck that you're going to start with and the cards you will add depending on how many players and heroes you are going against. So very very useful but let's get down to it. So here's the extra cards. I'm not really going to show you too much because you're going to see these cards in this deck uh, but let's talk about the cards you're going to get. So we got the Dragon's Bite, deal 4 damage, Dragon's Claw and you're going to have a couple of those. Uh, if you have another Dragon's Claw in play when you play this draw a card plus it does 3 damage. Dragon's Dragon's Fire, which does 4 damage, but you also can trash it to deal 4 damage to each opposing champion. Uh, so each opposing champion, and guards do not prevent this, so that can be big. That can be a killing blow, potentially. We have the Dragon's Tail, deal 2 damage to each opposing champion, and hero that is huge especially when there's a lot of heroes out on the table guards do not prevent this this deals six damage to an enemy boss and two damage to their champions we got elven gold and you'll notice in the upper left hand corner it actually has uh, some of the symbols on these four cards right here so this one's going to give you a coin which is ho-hum a coin but giving you a symbol is always great because you can start synergizing hoard a coin but you get to reveal the next card in the treasure hoard or if another player has more hoard items than you steal one of them now we'll come back to this because the horde items are over here we have not talked about them yet but man oh man they unlock your true power uh, we have the imperial shrevon which is a dollar ruby which is two bucks and then the demon coin which is a red but a coin now let's go back to that horde card or the uh, not the horde card the yeah the horde card which is going to allow you to start getting into your treasure hoard now your treasure hoard are going to be a special stack of cards you'll have here you'll shuffle them up you'll place them face down at the beginning of the game and these are kind of going to act as i would say champions for you these will be cards that when you purchase them via the horde they're going to go face up in front of you and they will never leave your area unless they are stolen from you so it's not like a typical thing where it can be destroyed but let's take a look at the horde cards because wow these things are awesome so the orb of death which needless to say is probably pretty bad for the opposing team lets you stun an opposing champion it also says to acquire skill check five and i'll talk more about that a little bit later uh, this one, the Crown of Will, is going to get you a coin or three damage. This one, uh, Ring of Wishes, doesn't prepare at the end of the turn. It only prepares when it is stolen, because as I mentioned, they can steal it from you. But it's going to allow you to search your deck, shuffle afterward, or discard pile for a card and put it into your hand, which can be absolutely monumentally huge, as you know if you played this or any other deck builder. Uh, Boots of Speed, put the next card you acquire this turn on top of your deck. You're going to have the Sword of Destiny, which will let you do five damage. You're going to have the Vial of Elven Tears, 5 health plus choose a faction. You count as having an extra card of that faction in play this turn. Uh, gain 2 damage for each faction you have in play. And Man, that text is small. I didn't notice that before. Uh, 1. Choose a faction. You count as having an extra card of that faction in play this turn. If you have all 4 factions in play, draw a card. And then 
to acquire skill check four, ignore the first three damage you would take each turn. When playing boss versus boss, ignore the first five damage instead, because you, there is another boss deck, which I'll probably review in the next week, uh, which also you can play boss versus boss, but I'll talk about that later. So these cards are going to go in front of you once you play the horde. You'll get one and you'll put it in front of you, and then that will be a persistent special ability that you will have, and you'll unlock it just like any other champion or guard for the most part. But there's a catch, because other people can steal them from you. So how this works is if one of the players, one of the, uh, the, the players that's trying to defeat the dragon is able to successfully deal 10 damage on their turn, then they have taunted the dragon, which means the dragon is going to have to attack them. That also means that they can discard enough cards in order to be, get the skill check to get the card. What does that mean? So let's just say that this card has a skill check of four. That means if I'm able to successfully discard a card that has the four in the upper corner, so that would be the cost, then I'm able to do this. Or two cards with a cost of two, or a card with a cost of one, and a card with a cost of three. But essentially you just have to discard those cards, and then you earn the shield until the dragon is able to take it back from you. So that's really kind of cool as well. It's a neat little mechanism where if you deal a lot of damage and you still have cards left over, then you could potentially steal those cards from the dragon. So it actually uh, kind of cool. It reminds me a little bit of uh, Lord of the Rings a little bit. Now another thing is, what happens when the dragon kills people? Because it is inevitable. The dragon is powerful. The dragon is buying cards. The dragon's going to play a regular game of Hero Realms pretty much, except they're going to be incredibly powerful. They're going to be purchasing cards. They're going to be synergizing. They're going to have champions and guards just like everybody else, and they're going to kill people. When that happens, that person is out of the game. Yes, that is a little bit of a bummer. There's player elimination in that aspect. Uh, so that player is what's called defeated. How this works is once per round, the other team, uh, the team that's trying to fight the dragon, is going to be able to take one card out of the defeated person's hand and then put it into their hand. Uh, and only one person will get to do that. So you all look at your hand and say, oh, oh, if you really had, you know, a blue card or something like that, or a red card, it could really help you out this turn. So for instance, that person would get the card and they still have a role in trying to defeat the dragon, but for the most part, they are still eliminated from the game. But anywho, if the dragon's able to kill everybody, then the dragon wins. If the other people are able to kill the dragon, then they will win. And that, in a nutshell, is how you're gonna play Hero Realms boss deck, the dragon. Alrighty then, Hero Realms, the boss deck, the dragon, from White Wizard Games. What are my final thoughts? Let's go over the pros, let's go over the cons. First, on the con side, game's not gonna be for everybody for a variety of different reasons. First and foremost, if you don't like Hero Realms for whatever reason, this one is still not going to be for you. Well, it does add a whole new way to play the game, which is awesome, it still is Hero Realms. You're still trying to synergize, you're still gonna have coins, you're still buying things, it's still a very straightforward deck building game, which if you don't like deck building games, or if you don't like Hero Realms, this one's probably not going to be for you. Now, a big con that I think a lot of people are going to have with this game is that if you do not have those specialty packs, the Cleric, the Wizard, the Ranger, all those packs, you won't be able to purchase this expansion. So this is kind of technically an expansion to an expansion, which, you know, you know that always sounds like jumping the shark a little bit. Uh, now, that being said, those expansions are relatively cheap, so it's not a big deal where it's like a $40 expansion. You have to have a $40 expansion to a $40 expansion. But still, if you just have base Hero Realms, you won't be able to play this. I'm sure someone will come up with some weird rules where you draw six cards or have extra coins each turn, and it will work. But for the time being, you do have to have those extra character packs, which is slightly annoying. Um, any other cons that I have the game? Oh, if you're playing at the higher player counts, you'll have to keep track of your health with pen and paper, which, you know, I don't feel like it's that big of a deal, but still, it would have been nice if they could have found some way to fit it all on the card, but I'm sure that probably was not feasible. Any other cons? No, moving on to the pros, I really like the Hero Realms boss deck. So I recently got into Hero Realms, I enjoy the game. I still enjoy Star Realms a smidge bit more, but I feel like they're adding more cool stuff to Hero Realms like this deck. And I really love this and I highly recommend this if you like Hero Realms because here's the bottom line. This turns the game into a six-player game. This turns the game into a cooperative one-versus-all game, where obviously everyone except for the one person is playing cooperative, and I like both that. This adds 
a really unique element to the game and I like that I like the fact that where you're seated at the table actually matters in this game that you can heal the people next to you I think that's really cool I like the fact that when someone's dead they're not just dead and you can now start getting cards from them now that being said that is another con that there's player elimination in this game and the player elimination is a big con in this game because while yes you're still in the game and I like the fact that you're still in the game and you can help people by giving them one card per round you don't really feel like you need to be there it's just like oh here's the five cards this person's gonna get which one's gonna help all of us more it definitely does feel like uh you know very straightforward player elimination while oh but hey you're still in the game so that is a little bit of a bummer but uh, I don't see another way around it to be honest with you but in the end I really liked Hero Realms I've played it at one two and four players so essentially that would be two three and five players i liked it all the different player accounts i would love to try it at six players even though i could see that being a little bit lengthy in between turns which would be a little bit of a bummer uh, but i really like it it adds something new to the game it adds something new to a deck building genre as well that i have not myself personally done and i think one versus all deck building games really i think there's there should be uh, a market for that because it's a really cool concept so in the end hero realm boss deck the dragon i like it i recommend it if you're willing to make the splurge and get all those character decks or if you have those character decks this is a no-brainer it's a nice twist up on the game definitely can recommend that is hero realms the boss deck the dragon from white wizard games if you enjoyed this review please be sure to click on that subscribe button down below or in the comments below let me know zombie apocalypse or dragon apocalypse which would you prefer for me personally i feel like it's kind of obvious zombie apocalypse i don't know what the hell i would do against a dragon however i feel like i could probably kill some zombies but let me know in the comments below are you a weirdo and want a dragon apocalypse and if so why and as always thanks for your time youtube